Hello, I'm Eve from the University of Pennsylvania's English Language Programs, and today we're talking about the Duolingo English Test, the DET. In this video, we're going to talk about two question types that come up on the DET. The first is called Read and Select, and the second is called Listen and Select. Here's our agenda. First, we'll take a look at an example of each of these question types. Then we'll talk about tips and strategies for completing these two question types. Let's look at an example of the read and select question type first. On the DET, here's what it looks like. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see a timer. You as the test taker have a minute to complete this task. Now let's take a look at what this question type is actually asking you to do. Select the real English words in the list. So you need to read each word and click on the word that you believe is a real English word. Finally, in the lower right-hand corner, you can see the word next, which you should only click when you've completed this task. The read and select question type is testing your literacy and comprehension abilities, which is why this task is included in those subscores. Now let's take a look at the listen and select question type. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to read and select, but there are two major differences. First, you can't see the word. Instead, you see these little speaker icons next to a checkbox, and you can click on that speaker to hear each word as many times as you like. And if you think it's a real English word, then click the checkbox. The other major difference is the time limit. For the listen and select question, you have 90 seconds rather than a minute. So while you can click each word as many times as you like, you still must move somewhat quickly in order to use your time effectively. The directions for the listen and select are exactly the same as the read and select. And again, there's a next button in the lower right hand corner, which you should only click on when you're ready to submit your answers. Similar to the read and select, this type of question is assessing your comprehension. And listening comprehension is also really important for situations when you're interacting with others. And so for that reason, this task is included in the comprehension and conversation subscores. Both the read and select and the listen and select question types can be really challenging because you either know that word or you don't. Unlike multiple choice questions where you might be able to use the process of elimination, or maybe you could analyze the question words to help you narrow down a response, these questions are so simple. Is this a word? Yes or no. But just because it's simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. No one knows every single word in the English language. And while reading and listening in English will help you expand your vocabulary, here are a few other tips to help you prepare for this type of question. First, let's understand the potential distractors. And a distractor is a wrong answer, but it's a wrong answer that looks kind of tempting. Here's what distractors are for this type of question. So one distractor might be words that are meant to look like regular words, but are actually irregular. So therefore the rules like plural and past tense don't apply to them. Here's an example. The verb drink is an irregular verb. The past tense is different and doesn't follow the rules of most past tense verbs. The past tense for drink is drank, not drinked. Drinked is not a word in English. So it's important to practice like irregular plurals and verbs. There are tons of websites and games uh, that have lists and activities to help you memorize the irregular verbs and plurals. Another type of distractor or wrong answer is words with the wrong prefix or suffix. Here's an example. The word possible means that something is able to be done. If we want to use a prefix to show that something is not possible or not able to be done, which letter should we add to the beginning of that word? 
For this particular word, the prefix that means not is im. Something that is impossible means it cannot be done. So a distractor could be a word like unpossible or dispossible or antipossible. These all look like words in English because those prefixes, un, dis, anti, they all exist, but they aren't the right match for our original word, possible. So it's a good idea to study prefixes and suffixes. And there are many resources, again, available online to help you practice selecting the right prefix or suffix for a word. The last and final tip we have is don't guess. The test instructions, they don't tell you exactly how many words on the list should be selected. So if you know a word is a real word in English, then select it. And if you don't, then don't select it. Again, it's simple, not easy, but simple. These are just a few strategies to help you, but remember you can practice more with this type of question and other types of questions on the DET website. Thanks for checking out this video about the read and select and listen and select type of questions. And you can find more videos like this on the Penn ELP YouTube channel.